tiffin in a temple upon at last drawing nigh to odo its appearance somewhat disappointed me a small island of moderate elevation but plumb not the height of the house that feasts you the beach was lined with expectant natives who lifting the chamois carried us up the beach alighting as they were bearing us along king media designating a canoe-house hard by ordered our craft to be deposited therein this being done we stepped upon the soil it was the first we had pressed in many days it sent a sympathetic thrill through our frames turning his steps inland media signed us to follow soon we came to a rude sort of enclosure fenced in by an imposing wall here a halt was sounded and in great haste the natives proceeded to throw down a portion of the stones this accomplished we were signed to enter the fortress thus carried by storm upon an artificial mount opposite the breach stood a small structure of bamboo open in front within was a long pedestal like a settee supporting three images also of wood and about the size of men bearing likewise a remote resemblance to that species of animated nature before these idols was an altar and at its base many fine mats entering the temple as if he felt very much at home medea disposed these mats so as to form a very pleasant lounge where he deferentially entreated yillah to recline then deliberately removing the first idol he motioned me to seat myself in its place setting aside the middle one he quietly established himself in its stead the displaced ciphers meanwhile standing upright before us and their blank faces looking upon this occasion unusually expressive as yet not a syllable as to the meaning of this cavalier treatment of their wooden godships we now tranquilly awaited what next might happen and i earnestly prayed that if sacrilege was being committed the vengeance of the gods might be averted from an ignoramus like me notwithstanding the petitioner himself hailed from the other world perfect silence was preserved jarl and samoa standing a little without the temple the first looking quite composed but his comrade casting wondering glances at my sociable apotheosis with medea now happening to glance upon the image last removed i was not long in detecting a certain resemblance between it and our host both were decorated in the same manner the carving on the idol exactly corresponded with the tattooing of the king presently the silence was relieved by a commotion without and a butler approached staggering under an immense wooden trencher which with profound genuflections he deposited upon the altar before us the tray was loaded like any harvest wain heaped up with good things sundry and diverse breadfruit and cocoa nuts and plantains and guavas all pleasant to the eye and furnishing good earnest of something equally pleasant to the palate transported at the sight of these viands after so long an estrangement from full indulgence in things green i was forthwith proceeding to help yillah and myself when like lightning a most unwelcome query obtruded did deities dine then also recurred what medea had declared about my shrine in odo was this it self-sacrilegious demigod that i was was i going to gluttonize on the very offerings laid before me in my own sacred fane give head to thy ways o taji lest thou stumble and be lost but hereupon what saw we but his cool majesty of odo tranquilly proceeding to lunch in the temple how now was medea too a god egad it must be so else why his image here in the fane and the original so entirely at his ease with legs fully cosily tucked away under the very altar itself this put to flight all appalling apprehensions of the necessity of starving to keep up the assumption of my divinity so without more ado i helped myself right and left taking the best care of yillah who overfed her flushed beauty with juicy fruits thereby transferring to her cheek the sweet glow of the guava our hunger appeased and medea in token thereof celestially laying his hand upon the appropriate region we proceeded to quit the enclosure but coming to the wall where the breach had been made 
lo and behold no breach was to be seen but down it came tumbling again and forth we issued this overthrowing of walls be it known is an incidental compliment paid distinguished personages in this part of mardi it would seem to signify that such gentry can go nowhere without creating an impression even upon the most obdurate substances but to return to our ambrosial lunch sublimate as you will the idea of our ethereality as intellectual beings no sensible man can harbour a doubt but that there is a vast deal of satisfaction in dining more there is a savour of life and immortality in substantial fare like balloons we are nothing till filled and well knowing this nature has provided this jolly round board our globe which in an endless sequence of courses and crops spreads a perpetual feast though as with most public banquets there is no small crowding and many go away famished from plenty End of chapter fifty five